Hello and welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell. My name is James Marley and today we're talking about sustainable growth stocks. And to help us talk about that topic, I've got Kelly Ma from Sage and Emma Fisher from Airly. Emma, I'm going to start with you, ProMedicus. It's hard to find someone that doesn't have good things to say about ProMedicus. Perhaps the valuation is the one thing that catches fundies up. For you, is it a buy, hold or a sell? Yeah, look, I'll say sell on valuation grounds, as you say, good business, clearly getting traction, but I really fall over at that 62 times sales multiple. I mean, you can always overpay for a good business. And to put that multiple into perspective, you know, if you'd paid 62 times Cochlear's sales 15 years ago, you would have paid $430. And the share price today is 250. So you would have lost 40% of your money, even though you'd picked Cochlear. Uh, and totally got it right that it was one of the best businesses. So you can always overpay for a good business. And I think, unfortunately, ProMedicus is in that camp. Kelly, ProMedicus is about 15% more expensive than it was this morning when uh, <laughs> before it reported its results. Is it a buy, hold or a sell for you? Uh, is, it is a hold. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like to buy it. Um, and so, but certainly after today, um, I want to buy, I wait for a dip. It's a fantastic company, great growth ahead of it. Um, I would say though, that looking at the PE is, um, it can, is fraught because it's been on this uh, three digit PE for a very long time. And if you hadn't bought it on a hundred times two years ago, you still would have made a lot of money. So, um, but I agree with Emma that like, it is very difficult to get your head around valuation um, on it. And particularly after today, rising 15% for no apparent reason, uh, other than um, it reported, but uh, I still can't understand the move today. So for me, it's a whole. Okay. Seek, one of the traditional and one of the great growth stories of Australia. It's been around a while now. Buy, hold or sell? It's a whole for me. Um, I do think that Seek uh, trades like a growth stock. It has had good growth, but uh, I characterise it as a, um, as a cyclical now. Uh, masquerading as a growth stock. Um, it's, got, it's in a good part of the cycle at the moment with job ads um, being very strong. Um, I think the, 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 the question, though, is that um, will they have enough pricing power to continue to grow uh, through the cycle when, those, when the job ad cycle starts to soften? They've introduced this new dynamic pricing um, policy, uh, which, which, could, which could work. Um, but the, for us, the jury's out a little bit. We want to see a little bit more evidence that they can actually push those prices through when the job ad market turns over, rolls over, I should say. So for us, um, given it's really high multiple, it's a hold. Emma, Seek, are you a buy, hold or sell on one of the oldest jobs boards going around? Uh, I, I agree with Kelly. I think it's a hold. Uh, great core business. If I was in the market to pay 50, 55 times P for an online business, I'd prefer to own REA. I think it's got better pricing power, um, as Kelly said. Uh, so for that reason alone, I'd say hold. Aristocrat Leisure has been a great performer over the past few years. It's been on a steady march higher. Buy, hold or sell? I would say buy for Aristocrat. Uh, I think it's a great business. Uh, customer, US casino customers just cannot get enough of their high performing gains. Ironically, digital, which was the reason no one wanted to own stock a few years ago, was their savior last year during lockdown. And that part of the business is also going very, very well. So undemanding multiple, great balance sheet, very high returning business, I'd say buy. Okay, Kelly, the punters can't get enough of aristocrat leisure. Can you get enough of it in your portfolio? Is it a buy, hold or a sell? I'm going to go a hold again, James. Um, I agree with Emma um, and yourself. It has There's a lot to like about Aristocrat. It's got a great track record of, um, you know, 20% growth for the last decade, um, taking market share in the US um, and, you know, invest in R&D and releases some really cool games that are very popular. And looking at it purely versus um, its peers, looking at the growth it offers um, and it's multiple, it does look cheap. However, um, I do think that um, with the increasing focus um, on, from investors on um, ESG and um, gambling stocks, I do think over time that um, the, the, well, number one, that it should trade at a discount to its peers that have similar growth. And I think that the ESG discount is going to get um, bigger over time, not smaller. Um, and, and frankly, if I'm going to own um, a growth stock, uh, I'd rather pay a little bit more uh, and not, uh, not own one that sort of is exploiting um, addictive behaviour. So for us, it's a whole. I want to hear the sustainable growth stock that you're going to tip in today. So what's the one that you've picked to, to share with us and, and with our readers? 
So James, one that I think that can deliver double digit earnings growth um, over, over many years, um, but not this next year because it's cycling such a huge growth in its earnings from last year in COVID is Temple and Webster, um, which is Australia's largest online furniture and homewares retailer. Um, it's enjoyed a huge amount of growth during COVID um, and it's really in its early stages of um, of penetration on the in the online market. Australia is way behind the US in terms of the percent of the market that is um, online. We're about at 9%. The US is more than double that at about 25%. And so from a, an industry point of view, the industry um, will move online and that is going to provide a big tailwind of growth. And Temple and Webster is the largest player in that industry is going to continue to grow really strongly. Um, the reason, the other reason though, that the earnings will not grow this next year is because they're choosing to reinvest back into the business to really grow their um, brand presence and their IT. They're doing some really cool things with um, uh, artificial intelligence um, and just to shore up their growth profile. But uh, longer term, uh, we believe that Temple and Webster can really deliver uh, double digit revenue growth, earnings growth. It's um, it makes a profit. It's it's debt free. It uh, generates a lot of cash. It can self fund its growth. And I think that it's one that you can put in the put pop in the bottom drawer and wake up in five years and you will have made a lot of money. Emma, have you got a double digit growth darling that you can pitch to us this afternoon? Yeah, sure. Before I, I should, full disclosure, I'm sitting on a Temple and Webster chair, so I'm doing my part <laughs> for Kelly's stock. Um, so my, my company is PWR Holdings, so it's a bit of an under-the-radar, um, smaller market cap um, business. Its market cap is around $700 million, but I think it's one for the bottom draw for the next 10 years. So their core business is doing cooling systems uh, for motorsports. They supply every Formula One team, uh, and that tells you, you know, how that they, that they make the best cooling systems in the world, basically. And the reason, you know, the really exciting reason to own the stock today is their emerging technologies division. So they're doing cooling systems for electric vehicles, for uh, aerospace applications, for missiles, for defence, uh, for a number of applications. And we think that business will underpin double digit earnings growth uh, well into the future. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you out there looking for some really strong growth, You've got the full spectrum from gaming to shopping to, uh, to Formula One cars. There's a couple of growth ideas to put in the bottom drawer. If you enjoyed that episode as much as I did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you've got your own growth ideas, why not leave us a comment? Thanks very much for watching.